are here in Kiev in Ukraine. Uh, we arrived a few days ago via a overnight sleeper train from our previous destination Kamenets Podolsky, which Joel enjoyed thoroughly to the nth degree. Um, so this is the first of our videos that you're watching. You should know that it is part of our overarching journey over land and sea from Ukraine to Australia. And in that journey, we want to make the foreign familiar. We want to share with you like the interesting details of people's lives, who we meet and just the places that we go. So if that sounds like something you'd be interested in, then subscribe below. We have been exploring the city for a few days, um, but what I've found the most interesting so far is getting to know our Airbnb host, Katerinia. Essentially, she's like real life Indiana Jones. I don't really know how else to describe it. So she has been working on restoring this building, which is on the country's 500 Frivia note which is part of the University of Kiev Mohila Academy, Ukraine's oldest university at 400 years old. And what I find the most interesting is that Katerina is not a historian or an architect or a builder or a contractor, but through a series of very interesting events, she has ended up in this position restoring this building. So we're entering the restricted zone of this is the building that you're working on and restoring. What do you love about doing this? Why are you here? Because like you said, this is not what you went to school for. This is not what you have experienced. But here you are discovering frescoes and revolvers <laughs> in like yes. in a building that is on your country's $500 bill. <laughs> well, it's uh, as, as a building, it's really uh, in some way probably a destiny because uh, that's not what I came back to the university for. After the Revolution of Dignity, I came back to the university as an administration. So something I should mention is that Katerina went to this university and she studied economics, but it was the first university in independent Ukraine to offer economics that wasn't Soviet economics. And she was in that first class of non-Soviet economics. I mean, it's just amazing. I just... and she she described it as being among that first group, that first group of risk takers. And yeah, I can't even imagine what that would have been like. Yep. Uh, but then with this building, I started as writing a project for the grant proposal. Uh, so I wrote one project uh -huh. for the grant proposal and we started more work on the restoration and I became the project manager of the whole restoration. Do you enjoy the work? Like the physical work in here, like the taking down the plaster and the, all that, do you enjoy it? And discovering the new fresco or the old fresco, yes. Yes, the new old fresco, <laughs> new yeah, old yeah, fresco yeah. that we didn't know about. Yes, yeah. you're like an archaeologist And the, in and the interesting building. thing is, it's archaeology is you dig into the ground, uh -huh. into the soil, you don't dig into the ground here, you just find it in the building. In the building, <laughs> yes, that is very interesting, probably handier. It's like one after another building starts to open secrets. You just find things and then that it leads expect. to one other thing and something else and something else. It's like a treasure hunt. You're like yep. a detective. Tre a treasure hunt. I would love this, I think. <laughs> I would really enjoy this. That's the nice part of it, yeah. Yeah, that must be really satisfying. This part is really nice. Yeah. So when I asked Katerini how she ended up in this like super interesting but not exactly in her field job, this is kind of how she explained it to me. She said that Ukraine has had two revolutions. So the first was in 2004, after which the people involved just went back to their everyday lives and left things to the politicians to make changes, but nothing really changed. So when there was a second revolution in 2014, people decided not to leave it to chance and they got more involved. So a lot of people had like a private sector job and they left that and took a job um, in a sector that they felt really passionate about, like something that they felt needed to be done. So if they were passionate about education, they took a job in the education sector. And I think from what I gather, a lot of them viewed it as like their civic duty. This was something that they needed to do to help make sure change 
happened. So for Katerina, she ended up at this university. She started out helping them with their 400 year birthday celebration and she designed this stamp or helped bring it to life. And then once that was over, she was writing grant proposals for them to get funding for different things. And then that just kind of led her to project managing this once they got funding for the restoration of this building. This is where they found the biggest cracks and not just the plaster, but also into the brick. And so they ripped that off, put on this gray stuff, which is, oops, which is also like part injected into here to add strength to the wall, correct? Correct. And did you do any of this actual work or was this the builders? Um, I'm done with professional builders. Yeah, okay. <laughs> well, but you have done things that other professionals would do, so I don't know why you say it like that. <laughs> well, is this where you found the revolver? Uh, the other one, the next okay. one. I will show you the exact place. Can we talk about that? Uh, yeah. So Katarina actually found this revolver in the renovation site in amongst all the rubble and she said that they were expecting to find things like pens and paper and books which they actually did but not expecting a revolver so there's over a hundred items that her and the team have found okay this is it this is the room where the revolver was found i feel like i'm in the game clue it was behind all these bookshelves oh, right here yes it was there on the floor Dun -dun. in the overall mud together with the later lipstick and some pen. Actually, for more than 100 years, everything that was lost, so everything was here. Imagine accidentally threw a revolver over yes. the bookshelf. Oh, yeah. so. <laughs> Without <laughs> two bullets. So there was a murder in this room. Bum, bum. Possibly, possibly. <laughs> yeah, and tell me all the things, the revolver and the pens and everything. You said you're gonna, there's going to be like an exhibition with those afterwards? Yes, the way, um, a lot of them, it took a museum more than a month just to categorize them wow <laughs> and to, to to clean them and to uh -huh. put, put back Very into good. the form I we see. we have found one of the new books recently that oh. library was happy like where did you find it <laughs> it's, it's considered lost students are asking for it we don't know that's behind the show <laughs> it's like you're making an exhibition of lost things yes yeah, yeah. Lost things. yeah. wow wow you know i said to joel earlier <laughs> My university that I went to was founded in 1960. <laughs> so you could imagine there's like no, no open galleries. <laughs> no open galleries, no history, no frescoes, like yeah. Nothing. <laughs> What is this that you just pulled out of your purse? <laughs> Here? Well, you have a hammer and uh, you take the bricks away. So this is the kind of thing Katerina carries in her purse because <laughs> when you're restoring old buildings, you need a, I don't even know what to call this, chisel. like a crowbar chisel. Oh, and this. Some more do, not, do not attack this woman on the subway. <laughs> uh, the press school itself is 1704. The bright color here is actually from research of the last year when the painters just cleaned a uh, certain see. part of the fresco, so most of it has to be like this. Up until this year, it was under this. It looked it like was, this. It did look like this. All it looked like this. So there are six of these frescoes in the university's classrooms. Um, and they're kind of in Katerina's care because they don't have funding right now. Um, and so she's got to make sure that they are kept in the best state until they resume the restoration work. So Katerina has climbed these stairs, ladder, and she's removing the cover of this fresco, which they put on because work has stopped because this year they don't have the funding. With her crowbar. This is why she carries a crowbar. Now I see. So Joel and Herb just collapsed the giant ladder that was here and it's going into the next room to show us the next fresco. I'm pretty sure that is not typical project manager protocol, but when you're bought in as Katerina is, this is what you do. <laughs> the globe. And the snake is going around So So project has been without funding for all of 2018 and they will find out in May 2019 if they are going to get more funding. So my fingers are crossed for her. Um, I really wanted to share her story with you because I thought it was just 
so commendable that she has chosen a job not based on the value that it will bring her but the value that it's going to bring her country um, so to me that was something I wanted to share which resulted in this kind of new style of vlog which I hope you liked I enjoyed making it let me know what you think in the comments and if you think you know somebody who would enjoy this then please share it with them so thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time